Is this a formal wedding? Not that it matters and that you're not invited. Well, I might want to break in and stop the thing. I don't want to be underdressed. Are you fucking serious? Dude, it's a really long drive, and you know I'm an alcoholic. Loudermilk abandoned this group to go to a wedding? Hey, Father Mike. Don't bother coming back here. Jim, I want you to keep an eye on him, yeah? Dude, he's a grown-ass man. Man. Ben? Ben, you got to do me a favor, though, all right? I need you to talk to Memphis. Hello, Ben. Memphis. Can I have everyone's attention, please? I'm sorry to report that Loudermilk is no longer your group leader. Is he okay? Well, define okay. Is he alive? Yes, but once again, he's put his own selfish needs ahead of this group's. But that's what he always does. He says it's how it works. Him first, then us. It's like putting on your oxygen mask before you're putting on the kids in a plane crash. Well, he should have been teaching you to put on your own oxygen masks. You're not children, you're men. And as of today, you will be treated as such. So please welcome Garrett Mason Burke. Great evening, every brainy. That's right, I'm not gonna be talking to your bodies. I'm gonna be talking to your brains. Uh, Garrett is a sober friends instructor and also a uh, part-time trainer for therapy cats. Okay, stop blowing my horn, Father. <laughs> you know, despite all my accomplishments, I'm still just a guy who wants to help people. And we're lucky to have him. So take it away, Garrett. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Wow. Look at you all. What the hell's a therapy cat? That's a great question. It's for people who need a little more love in their lives than their so-called loved ones are giving them. I like to call it emotional support, and I think I have a friend for you. So, Garrett. Yes. What were you addicted to? Booze? Drugs? Candy? <laughs> well, I do like a little candy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I really didn't touch any of that stuff. You know, anything that I need is already in. Wait, 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 wait. What the fuck is he talking about? Uh, <laughs> how could you know what we're going through if you've never experienced it? Training. Plus, I have read everything there is to know about addiction. So you've read Permanent Midnight by Jerry Stahl? Not the book, no. no. But you've watched the movie version with Ben Stiller. Is that the one that takes place in the scary museum? It is, if you can imagine Sacagawea blowing cocaine up Teddy Roosevelt's asshole. Oh! <laughs> I mean, it's like thinking you're gonna become some great football player just by watching the game on telly. Okay, but I have no interest in playing the game. I just wanna coach it. Does it matter whether Bill Belichuk ever played the game? Yeah, it does. And he did, at Wesleyan. Oh, he did, Wesleyan, wow. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, let me put it to you another way. A doctor doesn't have to have cancer in order to be a cancer doctor. Furthermore, why would you want a cancer doctor who had cancer? He'd be riddled with, with stuff from the chemo. He'd be all beat up. Guys, think of me as your healthy addiction counselor, one who had enough integrity not to mess up his life and screw everyone around him. and I'll get back to you, okay? <laughs> I thought you changed your fucking stupid ass message. All right, where the hell are you? You're supposed to be here an hour ago because I need to know what's going on with Memphis. Could you, uh, you know, if you get a second and you're not too busy, could you fucking call me back? It's louder milk. Hey. Yeah, where the hell have you been? Um, getting ice. Oh, yeah, likely story, huh? Dude, what the hell? Chill out, you're acting like a psycho. How am I supposed to act, okay? My ex-wife is somewhere getting married. My best friend and sponsor is fucking off the wagon and missing. Well, go out and find him. Well, I would, but what happens if I go and he comes back and I'm gone? And then I come back and he's gone, and now it's fucking Abbott and Costello up here. You're afraid. What? Yeah, you're afraid to go out there because you don't think you could do it and stay sober. Bullshit. See that? See the four? That's a four-year tip. I'm sober four years. Why would I be afraid? Because we're in New Orleans. 
and it's Mardi Gras. Well, I can't go out there. Okay, fine. I'll go out and get no, it. No, no, uh -uh. you're even more raw than I am. No, I'm not. This whole ex-wife thing has set you back to day one. You don't have to do this for me. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this to get the fuck away from you. Okay, I can live with that. Tell him. No, I did not promise you. You okay? promised me. No, sweetie, I didn't promise you that I would tell him. I said that I should. And then I thought to myself, why now? You know what I mean? I mean, he's gonna find out eventually, Memphis. And what about me? I don't need that kind of stress right before my Damn wedding. it, Ben, this is exactly what I didn't want to happen. So who the fuck does he think that I'm marrying? Emerald. Emerald Lagazi? Emerald somebody, I don't know. I kept it big. I can't believe this. I knew I should have told him myself. Well, lucky you, you're gonna have that chance because uh, he's, he's here. What? He's here? Yeah. In New Orleans? Yes, he is here. He's here. I'm sorry, I couldn't shake him. He's like a goddamn deer tick. Oh my God. He's not gonna try and pull some bullshit out of the graduate, is he? You like, fuck your mom? You know what? I'm actually glad that he's here because I can't go through this without him knowing. Okay, sweetheart, look, why don't you just calm down? We can tell him in a little while when we're far away. What do you think? Ben, this is your best friend. How could you treat him like this? Where are you going? I'm gonna go tell him, because you're too much of a pussy. Okay, all right, all right. You're right, okay, you're right. It's on me. I said I would tell him, and as soon as I get really, really drunk, I will man up and tell him, okay? And maybe we can get something to eat first. Okay, let's go get you some food, and then you have to tell him. Definitely, definitely. I get really, really drunk, and then, uh, and, then I'll, and then I'll have something to eat, and then maybe dessert, and then, then we'll get some coffee, and then, and then I'll, and then I'll tell him. All right. Better. Are you sure you don't want to do it after the honeymoon? No, you have to tell him. Okay, now. I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell okay. him. All right. Memphis talking, and then he kissed her. Well, so what? The, you know, they're, they're friends. Friends kiss. On the mouth. I mean, there was tongue and teeth and fucking. You're out of your mind. Yeah, that's not them. Yes, it is. Look at her leg. You know how I know that's not them? Is because she would never, ever cheat on her fiance before the wedding. Never. That's not her. Jesus Christ, get your head out of your ass! That's not possible. Yeah, well, you didn't think he'd start boozing either, did you? This is different. Liar's a liar. You taught me that. You know, I see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to make me forget all about this and go back so I don't make a fool of myself at the wedding tomorrow. Please tell me that's what you're trying to do here. 
I'm sorry. <sighs> oh my God. That's why he's pushing Allison on me all the time is because he wants me out of the picture. It's probably also why he's boozing. I mean, can you imagine how much guilt he's been living? You know what? I don't want to fucking imagine about how much guilt he's feeling. You know, that's the problem with you is you just jump immediately to the wrong thing. He's my friend and she was my wife, okay? So I want to worry about how the fuck I'm feeling about it. What I think. And you know what I think? I think with that ring in your nose, you look like a skinny hand grenade. Being a real fucking asshole. Fuck you. for hearing me out. Yeah, whatever you want. Next week, I'll bring a box for the shoes in case it rains, okay? Don't worry about it. I'm not worried. I just thought it would be fun and fresh to put our footwear in bins. We don't have to do it, unless you think it's a good idea. Okay, whatever you want. Listen, I really got to go, though, so just give me a heart hug. Oh, heart hug. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yes, there it is. You're so good today. Oh, hey, gang. Hey. What was that all about? Oh, we're just talking. Wow. Talking? Oh, Sounds like a nice... Looks like you were hugging. Yeah. It was a hard hug. Hey, look, I've been coming to these meetings for two months, and Laddermilk has been a total dick to me. This guy gets me. He likes me. He loved my wet shoebox idea. You guys laughed at it, but he thought it was fucking gold. Mm, Laddermilk wasn't nice to you, but you kept coming. Well, yeah, but I should want to come to these meetings. I shouldn't dread them. You should want to stay sober no matter what. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Laddermilk talks the talk, but he walks the walk. Yeah, that's just a cutesy way of saying he's a fuck. Why don't you go fuck you? Oh shit, that's a good one, Oscar Wilde. Fuck it. Way to get him. <coughs> Louder milk? What? Have you been? Hey, asshole, you didn't pay your tab. It's cool. I'll get it. How much? $14. What? <laughs> For one shot? Yeah, you're in New Orleans, not Shreveport. Ah! Drinks are cheap in Shreveport. Why are you puking from one shot? I knew it was a bad idea when I did it. Dude, get your shit together. You've been all up in my ass about staying on the wagon, and here you are puking in an alley. Hey, what do you not fucking understand? All right? My best friend is marrying the love of my life tomorrow. And my dad blew his brains out. Get over it. Shit happens. Hurting yourself is easy and living is hard. You told me that. I said that? I need better shit. That's not that helpful. Come on. 
We gotta get you some rest so you can ruin a wedding tomorrow. All right, I just wanna get the barf off my pants. You gotta start chewing more. There's like a whole shrimp in there. You shouldn't be here, Samuel. No, it's okay. It's the groom who's not supposed to see you before the wedding. Well, then he wasn't supposed to do a lot of things. Where's that Humpty Dumpty piece of shit? It's not Ben's fault. We didn't mean for this to happen. Yeah, you know, that's what people always say when they're fucking the wrong person. But thank you for sparing me the soulmate speech. Hey, this is a church, asshole. Well, then don't fucking swear. Loud enough, please, okay? I just like talking to him. Every time I called him, he was in such a good mood. And I needed that. Oh my god, the phone thing? That's an act! He's, he's not happy, he's fucking miserable. Have you spent any time with him? I have. And Ben is a good man and he's terrified of hurting you. No, I, I'll tell you who Ben is, all right? Ben's the kind of guy who would steal his best friend's wife. I was your ex-wife when I met him. Um, there's something else you should know. Ben started drinking again. Yeah, so? Well, then why would you want to be with him? Loudermilk's stone sober. I mean, sort of. I mean, he had a shot the other night, but it's not a big deal, right? I mean, he, he's, he's a changed man. I know. That's why we broke up. I thought you broke up because of the accident. No. Things happen. People make mistakes. I know that. But he was drunk. So was I. He only drove because I couldn't. Look, we broke up because Loudermilk overreacted to the accident. All of a sudden, it was about sober days and meetings and apologizing to every single person he knew. Look, that's your choice. But I don't want to live the way that you live. What way? Hiding from life. I like to go out. I like bars. I'm sorry if that sounds bad, but it's the truth. I'm not hiding. I quit all that for you, for us, because I thought we needed a little stability and a little sanity. But stability wasn't what I wanted. I wanted the man that I married. Louder milk, I'm sorry, but I want to live the way I want to live. Bye, Memphis. Somehow I thought you'd fight a little harder than that. Yeah, me too. Meet you back at the room, okay? What are you doing? Well, the bride's here. Groom's got to be around somewhere. Go on, go get your stuff together. Let's. We're gonna go home. Okay. Hey, I'm really sorry about last night. I. You've been a rock for me this week. So thanks. I'd offer to help, but you probably don't want my hands around your neck. 
Look, Sam. Don't Sam me, asshole. Did you really think you were gonna be able to run off with my ex-wife and get married and never tell me about it? To be honest, that was the plan, yes. I was also thinking about changing my identity. I knew it would be tricky, but I've always been fond of the name Rex Blanton. Rex Blanton. That's good, it sounds like a douche. How could you do this? No, hold on, look, I didn't do this to you, okay? I did it for me. No, I mean, literally, how could you do this? And me not find out, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Come on, Sam, you're like the center of your own universe. There's a lot of things you don't see. Fuck you, don't pin this on me. No, I, I'm just saying, you got yourself wrapped up in a lot of other people's lives. Sometimes that makes it harder for you to see what's going on in your own life. God damn it, Ben, I was counting on you. You know that? Did you know that every morning when I wake up, I think, oh, you know what? If Ben can stay clean, I can stay clean. And you lied to me about that. You lied to me about Memphis. You lied about everything. No, I, did, no, I didn't lie about it, okay? No, I didn't lie about it. I knew it was a shitty thing to do, and it was morally reprehensible, but I did not lie. Yes, I did. Actually, I lied. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, Louder Milk. Look, I, I, I've never had the sort of things that you had. I, you know, marriage and... This someone to love me that I could love. Soulmate. Oh, God, you had to fucking say it, didn't you? Just shut up, okay, please, just for a second. Let me talk, just listen to me. Look, my whole life, I've been the guy that nobody noticed. I'm 6'3", 275 pounds, you know, when I'm in shape, and still I'm completely invisible. Well, I'm, Fucking tired of it. I, I needed this. She makes she makes me feel adored. And and and, and, and I hurt you. And, and then and that and that makes me a piece of shit. For, for the first time in my life, I feel like I actually have a shot at real happiness. Uh, at least for a while. So I took it. Want to hit me? Why don't you hit me? I mean it. Why don't you give me just one shot? Good hard one. That's fucking childish. Is it? It would make me feel a whole lot better. Would it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That would make you feel better? Sure. Really? Yes. All right, fire one ready. How does this make you feel? Way, way worse. Good. Goodbye, Ben. Hey, you two deserve each other. Come on, don't, don't be like that. No, 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 no. I mean, in a good way. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I set your car on fire. You're back. Yep. I was worried about you guys. How was your trip? It was a, a fucking ball. How about you? How are how was your uh how are you? I'm pretty good. Where's Spen? Uh stayed in New Orleans. Is he coming back? No. No, he's not. Is he okay? Ben's moved on. He was kind of a bullshit friend, and I, I, I don't really want to talk about him. I'm mailing him his stuff, so. Okay. I, um, I have some extra moving boxes if you need them. 
I found a sublet closer to Carl's place, so I'm heading over there at the end of the month. Why, why are you telling me? Because I thought you'd like to know. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Here. <clears throat> I can't keep no, it. No, no, I, I don't want that back. I, I gave that to you. I can't keep your last copy. I, that's, that's yours. I gave that to you. And now I'm returning it. Circle of life. I, uh, I wish you and Dr. Heimlock have a wonderful life together. And I hope someday you grow up and stop being a dry drunk. Okay. So is this the part now where you tell me that if I was a nicer person, I'd have a lot of friends and bad things wouldn't happen to me? My life would just be blowjobs and daffodils? Hey, you want me to be real? You want me to really, really be real? I have fake bags of garbage that I'll take downstairs hoping to run into you so we can talk for a couple of minutes, even if it's just you telling me what an asshole I am. I sat in that lobby with that record player for about two and a half hours with my key in the mailbox waiting for you to get home. And I have mixed feelings about it because your taste in music is fucking dreadful and there's really nothing to be done about that. Your boyfriend is a coward. Not because he froze when that guy was choking, which he did, but because he's got you moving near him, but he doesn't have you moving in with him. And I think that sucks. And if you do go, my stomach is gonna hurt for a very, very long time. So my stomach would appreciate it if you didn't go. And I would appreciate it too. Because you standing here in this hallway is about the only real thing in my life right now. making no fucking sense. Listen to me, this is a very, very important part. When you're up, you go shimmy shoe down. And that's how you get over the obstacle of that you want to but you're not gonna. You want that warmth, you want that blanket. So you might reach for that bottle. Maybe that glass stick. Sucking on that glass stick, right? And then I get it. But you can't, you can't go to the dick, you can't go to the bottle. <laughs> you gotta go in the heart. Samuel. Oh, hey, Mike. See a new guy finally got his shoebox. I trust you're not here to make a scene. No. Just eavesdrop. I see you got uh, someone else in there running things. Well, what do you expect? Group had to continue. How's he doing? He shows up on time. He doesn't shout at the group. He never uses the word cunt. In point of fact, he follows all the rules to a T. You shimmy shoot, you shimmy shoot, you shimmy shoot, you shimmy shoot. And then you pop out, you pop out, you pop out. That's how it works. What and the when you fuck am I looking listen at? Listen to me, listen to me. This is That's good. I just really came here to uh, clear up the thing about me flaking on you. You mean to apologize? However you want to put it. Well, I appreciate it. This is a bunch of fucking bullshit. No, cut it. Listen to me. I should, uh, Jimmy Shoe, and it, I should go have a look at that. Yeah, I'll we'll see you around, Mike. God forbid you listen for two seconds. We have neighbors. It's completely unacceptable to have that kind of noise in here. You understand? I do understand, Father. I apologize. I had broken into a little ditty, which was an obvious He's trigger for... All the which was a trigger! It's milk! Any of you fuck-ups wants to really get better, you come find me. Hey, take your shoes off! <laughs>